Well, what about Trump? What's going on there? What's going on there exactly? You know, it was interesting listening to Trump's inauguration speech because I detected elements of national socialist thought in it. You know, and, and I'm not being dismissive. I'm seriously not being dismissive. But when you radically activate on the side of the left, you call forth compensatory forces and they're not in your control. And like Trump opened his speech, you just read it, it's, he sounds like a 1950s socialist, you know, he's going to use the power of the state to bring the industry home, to produce a lot of infrastructure. It's a state business unity with the state in charge. And then at the end of his speech, which is where he stops being a, at least the international kind of socialist, he says, well, borders are really important and so is national identity. And, you know, he does embed that within belief in God, which is probably a good thing, assuming that he's serious about that. But, you know, the fact that Trump was elected in the, and that there was such a fight between him and, and the Clintonites and, and that the Clintonites were playing identity politics instead of speaking for the working class, who then Trump co-opted like he should have, um, there, there's a war going on there, and then, well, what about Brexit? What's going on there? And what about France with Marine Le Pen? And what about Holland with Wilders? You know, watch it. We're in a chaotic time, and you know, I've got letters from people all over the world who tell me how they can't say what they think. It's like, oh, well, that's not very good. And they're kind of happy with me because maybe they think that I emboldened them in some way, and so good, good for that hypothetically, and most of the people who wrote me, the overwhelming majority, were reasonable, so I'm pretty happy about that too. But, and maybe I'm wrong about my damn diagnosis, because like, what do I know? But I do have this proclivity to get to the bottom of things. And what's at the bottom of this is an ideological war, or philosophical war, it's even deeper than that. It might even be deeper than a philosophical war, which is something that's more like a metaphysical or a theological war. You know, it depends on how far down you look. And the postmodernists know exactly what they're doing. This isn't accidental. Of course you shut down speakers you don't agree with, because you can't have a dialogue with them then anyways, because human beings can't have dialogue. There's no such thing as a human individual. There's no such thing as truth. Here's the postmodern world. It's the Hobbesian nightmare. It's everyone against everyone else, except it's not individuals, it's groups. And you're stuck in your damn group, and it's the only thing about you anyways that's relevant, which is why we might base our hiring on it, for example. And you're oppressed, and even if you don't know it, it's only because you've internalized it, and it's the only thing that's real about you anyways. And <laughs> I can't talk to you because I'm in my own little silo of privileged belief, and besides, we can't use logic because that doesn't exist, and so you're in a group and I'm in a group, and all we can do is have a war. Or we can talk, but we don't get to talk, because you can't talk if you're a postmodernist, because speech is just chatter. So when it's just chatter that, that supports the people in power, that's how they think. And so the whole world is this little armed war of identity group against identity group against identity group. And you shut down people who don't agree with you, because why should you let them talk? It's, you don't believe in any of the reasons why you would let someone talk. So, th this isn't accidental, it's not because they're afraid, although it's also because of that. They hijack, you know, fear, they hijack compassion, they make anyone who, who puts forward an alternative view into a terrorist of ideas, and someone who's heartless at the core, which is really incredibly intelligent, it's such a good strategy. It's so devious and brilliant, and it's so effective. Because who, who the hell wants to be labeled a bigot? You probably are a damn bigot, just like everyone else. So, you know, and it's easy to make people feel guilty about that. Maybe they should. <laughs>